The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to the O Gladsome Light Podcast. This program contains preaching and teaching from an Orthodox Christian perspective to help you in your walk with Jesus Christ and to be victorious in Him. Well, welcome to the show. It's O Gladsome Light every Monday here at noon on W4CY.com, your internet radio 24 7 around the world, with a simultaneous broadcast on K4HD in Hollywood, California and W4VET. Live call-in number is 561-623-9429. That's 561-623-9429 with a Skype address of W4CY Radio is your Skype address. And if you go to the W4CY.com website, you can get in the chat room and chat with us during this show. The topic is, is attending church important? And so we're going to be talking about that today. And uh, so let me get, get right into the uh, into the subject material. Uh, why go to church, man? Have you ever heard your kids say to you, do we have to go to church today, mom or dad? Do we have to go? Yes. I remember when I was a little kid, they made me go. And if I didn't go, I... I didn't. I was punished the whole day. I didn't get to do anything I wanted to do, so it was kind of like you know forced into the into the church. And even the parents can say, "Do I really have to go to church?" Or people say, "But I'm spiritual. I'm not religious. I don't need to go to church." So those are some of the excuses. Maybe people don't see it as important. And so what we're going to do today is unfold this whole subject as attending church important. And it's all going to come from the Scriptures, Old and New Testament, showing why it's important. Now, after this radio show, you may say, well, I still don't see it important. And here's the thing, that we're all free will agents, and we have choices to make. And the Lord has ever told us many times in the Scripture, I lay before you blessings and curses. You choose. The blessings will lead to life, and the curses will lead to death. So don't blame God when you're on that slippery slope headed for hell and saying, God, why would you send me there when you had all that opportunity while you are alive to make a willful decision to worship the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me go back and, and do some uh, reading here and then bring the scriptures into play. We are all spiritual beings. We have a soul. And I said in previous radio shows that in God's eyes, we don't die, even though our flesh may die, but our soul is eternal. We are all religious in that we show reverence, love, and devotion through ceremonial prayer to things our soul considers sacred like going to the baseball game or maybe going to the football game. How about uh, the basketball games, hockey? I mean, all those sports, uh, I've, I see so much fervor at these sporting events that I'm just amazed that uh, if you do that in church, you look at it as a goof. Uh, can you imagine painting yourself up and going into church and saying, I love Jesus? Could you do that, Chad? Could we go into church and get all painted up and say, 
Yay, Jesus, you know? We could, but the establishment probably wouldn't recommend it. That'd be cool, yeah. though. Go, Jesus. Uh, yeah. Number seven in the back, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, you know, uh, or the back with it, say Yeshua. You there you know? go. Number <laughs> seven, Yeshua. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, you know, when you go to a sporting event, uh, you see all the craziness there and all the team spirit. There's so much enthusiasm uh, in sports. I think uh, alcohol makes a lot of people enthusiastic, yeah, or too. It could be the hot dogs. I'm also, the yeah, alcohol or the hot dogs. It's a coin toss. Well, of course, beer and hot dogs go together, I guess. They you know? do. It's American dream. <laughs> <laughs> what a diet, huh? Right. What would you have? Well, I had hot dogs and beer. You wonder why. All right. We are, we are. So we're all spiritual. We do worship, and uh, and maybe we don't think we do. And so I'm going to try and clear some stuff up today during the show to deny one or the other, you know, uh, to you know our point of worship and being sacred, uh, you know, to deny it is the the very essence of who we are. You know, what animates us to move, what motivates us, uh, it is our soul that that moves us. You know, uh, if how do I explain that? Uh, the body is just a tool that the soul uses to to move. You know, you want to you want to go get. You're driving down the road, boys. I want to get me a Coca-Cola. And so, oh yeah, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that thought? Yeah, I want I want a Coca-Cola, or maybe I want to stop and get me a candy bar. You know, or it's just a desire that you want to fulfill. Your flesh is saying, "Hey, I want that." And then your soul can either say yes or no to that. So you can uh, obey the gut. <laughs> Which is our a lot of people? That's their god. Their stomach is their god. All you got to do is go to uh, Golden Corral. <laughs> you ever been to Golden Corral? Once. Yeah, and that's enough, isn't it, Chad? Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, here we are. Uh, let's look at Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-six. We are made in the image and likeness of God. That's what it says in one twenty-six. So there may be something to that. If we are made in the image of likeness in God, Exodus chapter 20, the first four commandments are related to spiritual, religious, and worship of God. I am God and do not have any others before me. No idols. Do not use the Lord's name in vain. See, we've never done that, have we? No. People are doing it like crazy now, this OMG stuff. People oh. don't even realize that they're blaspheming God. Yeah. OMG left and right. Oh, I know. I, I know. What's with the mic drop now? Are we doing mic how drop much, still? How much uh, does a microphone cost? You're in the sound <laughs> business. You're in the entertainment business. That costs a lot. A good microphone, you know, sure, a handheld. Sure, 58's $100, That's right? 100 I use a $250 one, so if someone drops my mic, I'm going to be twice as upset. So you're gonna, they're going to go, and that's that, boom. Even Obama did a mic drop, Who started you know? that? That's I don't know stuff. where all that stuff came in. Everybody's dropping the mic, Please you know? put the mic down nicely. Thank you. I mean, I've seen them do this, a corded mic swinging around like this, you know, swinging by the tail. I go, what are you doing? Make sure you tape that. Golly. Very bad. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, we see in Exodus chapter 20, the commandments, you know, when Moses went up on the mountain and received, you know, the commandments from the Lord and brought them down. And, and the first 10, you know, these are, there was more than 10 commandments, but, you know, there were over 660 commandments, but the first 10, are, you know, the first four are vertical, and then the rest of them are horizontal. If you think about it, that God, you know, he, he's the most important. He should be preeminent in your life, and then the rest of them are a relationship, a horizontal relationship with mankind. God knows us, true or false. He knows. He the knows. Hairs on, number of hairs on your head, even. He made us. Right. Yes. Now, if we do not worship the God of Israel, the God with his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and his Holy Spirit, then we will worship something else or someone else. And I have seen that. American Idol. You ever heard of that show? I have. Yeah. So I know it's just a show title, American Idol, but do people want to be idols? Or is that not good? Yeah, there's a lot of idolizing going on in the world, isn't there? Yes, there is. 
you you actually can can be the <laughs> you can become the idol. Uh, uh, now let me uh, expand on that. Most people don't think they worship idols. Most people don't. You know, they just think they're they'll stop and get their coffee or whatever and go to work and do their job and come home and be a husband and wife and raise the children and all that stuff, right? But then, uh, but in the fact that they are self-absorbed in self, it's S E L F capital self. You make yourself out to be a god, little G. Because you worship yourself? Yes. Now, I'm going to get – I'll show you why. Remember, Satan tried it, and he failed. And what happened to him? Cast down. He says, I will ascend to the highest throne. I will – I, the big I, the big, I will do this. And God says, here's a lightning bolt. Hop on. I'm going to shoot you down to earth. Enjoy the darkness. Enjoy it. And then you can roam around on earth, you know. And, and he did. Now, Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, mortify or kill, therefore your members which are upon the earth, not people, okay? He's talking about mortifying the passions, our, our, our passions that are not in line with God. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, which means desire or lust, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Be, why is now? Why is Colossians? Why is Saint Paul telling the Colossians that that's idolatry? Because all of that stuff is aimed at self. It's not. You have not. See, does not God want you to surrender your will to His will? We say it in the Our Father, not my will, but Thy will be done. And because of this idolatry of fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil desires or lust, and covetousness, okay, the, the wrath of God will come on the children of disobedience, true or false. True. That's in Colossians chapter 3. It's not what I'm saying. It's what the Lord is saying through the Holy Spirit, and Paul wrote it down. Now, worship. Are we, are we created to worship? God. All right. We can worship anything we want. A lot of people are worshiping the smartphones in the right hand these days. Yeah, well, you know, if you didn't have a left hand. <laughs> well, they got to walk the dog and drive the car with the left hand. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's, uh, think about this, Chad. You know, everything's on the tablet or, or on the cell phone. And if we have an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, every, the grid goes down and everything goes dark. It's called back to the Stone Ages. And then only people <laughs> that are going to survive are the Amish. Because they're already used to working without power. They don't. All they have is candles, fire. Yeah, they use the and fire. they make the fire. Dig their own. They use horses to plow the field. Plow the field, right? I mean, they they they'll survive. Yep. And all of us who have got these tablets and and all phones and all that stuff, we're, we're going to be, be freaking out. We're going to be blind <laughs> if the power grid oh, goes down. I can't watch Netflix. Uh, I mean, I can't watch my HBO. Uh, I which, can't take selfies and post them. Oh. Wow. That's going to hurt. This is going to totally unravel the whole fabric <laughs> of our country, you know, the, of, of humanity. And there's a great chance it will happen. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. If we're Mystery Babylon, <laughs> there's a good chance. Do you know there's a city up in New York called Babylon, New York? Yeah. Is it Isn't close it to a, the U.N.? Probably. Mm. I don't know exactly where Babylon, New York is, but I think it's kind of interesting that yeah. there's a city in the United States right. called Babylon. <laughs> good thinking. <laughs> yeah. This this read Revelation, you'll see about the the ships at sea uh, when Babylon's burning. They're going to say, "Woe is us!" You it says know, all the merchants will be weeping and mourning because basically their money's gone too. Yeah, it's all going to fold. Yep. I mean, this thing about this a big thing about bitcoins now, and when the internet goes down forever, what happens to all the bitcoins? Oh, really? So it's internet connected to Bitcoin. Yeah, that's Nothing all. To paper? It's all internet money. Huh? Oh, it's all go. It all turns into powder or. What do you call? Where's a? Where does all these electrons go when uh, the internet goes down? Where's just the numbers? Most, you, you know, know? Is it the ones and zero or zeros and ones. It's a binary system. It all. It'll probably all be erased, and they'll start over and say, "Oh, now let me think." Get the mark. If if uh, if all that goes down, will God disappear too? No, no. God is forever God eternal, can't isn't He? No. And so, what? Maybe that's one way for us to get our focus correct and. Uh, get our worship lined up mm -hmm. so maybe that emp would be a good thing and not a bad thing even though we would say oh what was me the calamity upon me i can't check my bank statement 
and that won't make any difference anyway because everything's going to go dark, you know. Remember, I remember back when I was a kid, I used to get paid in cash. Yeah. Remember cash? Those days are dwindling out now. Yeah, I mean, going digital. Uh, cash? You, you can even deposit your checks through your smartphone now. You don't have to go to the bank. Right. I mean, a lot of my Social Security check is direct deposit. Is it? I don't yeah. see any. The only time I see cash is when I go to the ATM and I put my card in, out comes some cash. I go, isn't that nice? So when the power goes down. I, I can feel, yeah, that, they won't trouble. work either. You're going to see rioting, people trying oh. to get in the banks and get their money out and food shelves will be empty. That happened in the 30s. It's Did called it? the Great Depression. Yeah. This when could the be. stock market crashed. Yeah, this and the bank, there was a run on the banks and they were closed. They still had power. And my grandma went through the Great Depression and I learned a lot from my grandma. Uh, she knew how to save and for a rainy day. I was thinking about that, too. For the people that save money, if the power goes out and they're saving money, is the cash really going to matter at no. that point? Because you can't deposit it. What about gold? Gold and gold silver. Gold maybe still work, you know. But, how, but maybe, bartering, to it. maybe bartering uh, will work. Uh, yeah. Maybe I have a skill that I can True. trade for another skill. Exactly. You I, know, we I can barter that. back and forth, you know. True. But the bad thing is that uh, the Internet radio will go down. That's all right. You can still preach to crowds. Yes, I can. Yep. I can do a live show uh, standing on a podium and preach to people. Amen. And uh, let them have it. You bet. And, with love. Yes. With love. Now, let me talk about worship here. Uh, a story about the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well. And, well, Jesus is there, and the woman walks up, and, she, and he tells her about her life. And she said to him, mm, I perceive that thou art a prophet, because he knew about her. And uh, she thought maybe she held it, she kept a good secret, but the Lord saw right through that. Many times in, you read in the gospel where the Lord knew the intentions of the heart of the people. He looked at the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and he said, oh, you guys, you look great on the outside, but you're full of dead men's bones, whitewashed sepulchers, you know. Uh, give me lip service. Uh, you, you say you love me, but your heart is far from me. So it kind of boils back to the heart, doesn't it, Chad? That heart is the issue with all of creation that God has made. So the woman says, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And shall and continue the conversation. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So now, so she's talking about worship. Now, if if worship really didn't exist, what would Jesus would refute it? Say he's the Son of God, isn't he? And he's un, but truth. Remember, Pilate says, "What is truth?" Jesus is truth, all truth. There's no lie within him. And Jesus said unto the woman, Believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither, neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. What? But that was the center of the earth, Jerusalem. That's where the temple is or was. And the western wall still remains, and there's this, this dome of the rock on top, the holy, you know, the, the flattened area that used to where the tabernacle was. But he said, But the hour cometh. And now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, the only way I know how to worship God in spirit is with the Holy Spirit. Don't we have to have the Holy Spirit in our temple to worship the, the Lord? And will he not show us how to properly worship? He says, worship spiritually, not carnally. Yes. Now, you go to church to fulfill who you are, to do what you were made to do. Can anyone honestly say, I'm a student and not attend school? Think about that one. I'm a student, but I don't go to school. Then you're not a student. Get it? You understand that? Unless you're homeschooled. Still, you're a student. Online, yeah. You're online, still a student. You're home. still uh, in study. And yeah. really, uh, to be truthful about this whole thing, we all should be students of the Scriptures. We should be constantly in the Scriptures seeking the Lord's face moment by moment. And the truth. And that's what— Because the truth is the word, right, too? Yeah. And, it, and the Lord says the truth will set you free. 
And there's one thing about the truth is you don't got to cover it up as a lie. Because a lie, you got to keep counting. You got to be a good accountant when you lie so you don't screw up the lie you told before or before. And all these lies compound themselves where if you tell the truth, it stands on its own merit. It's done. It's over It's with. done. It may, well, they say the truth hurts. Well, that well, may have. For a little while. Yeah. But at least it won't hurt as bad as a lie once you, you're caught in that lie. I mean, if you tell a lie, well, then maybe at that moment there's comfort. Right. But then down the line there may be another lie. Oof. You got to keep you got, lying. You got keep another lying. one. And then who's the father of all lies? Satan. There you go. So you're worshiping Satan in the sense. You're, 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 part, of his, you're part of his army. Yeah. And, and I want to be a part of the army of God. I don't want to be the army of Satan. Where do you want to go after your life on the earth ends? And it will end. Either you're gonna either you're gonna die and turn to dust, okay, in the grave, or you're gonna be translated and caught up into heaven. At at one point, there's gonna be a transformation from corruptible to incorruptible. Yes, because you cannot inherit the incorruptible has to be made incorruptible. You cannot go into heaven in your flesh. Okay, what about Elijah? He was translated. He was taken. He was taken. But from his earthly, he was made incorruptible in a twinkling of an eye as God sent that fiery chariot to call him up. Look at Enoch. We don't know much about Enoch. He was taken. He was taken also. Now, I highly recommend reading his book, too. Yes, Enoch, yes. Now, think about the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Died on a cross, was buried, third day resurrection, never to die again. Incorruptible. Incorruptible. He was incorruptible to start with, probably. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know? well it, think about, yeah, right, exactly, Chad. You think, but, in, but he, he got his flesh from his mom, Mother, yeah. yeah, and then he dwelt on the earth to teach us the love of the Father. He said, well, we can't take that. There's just too much love here, so we got to kill it. And so he even went to uh, Bethany and raised Lazarus from the dead. He was at four days dead. Then they lay, ray, he raised Lazarus by saying, Lazarus, come forth. And he did. He, he, in, a, in his flesh, he, uh, he obeyed the word of God, the Logos, and came out of the tomb. Even the Martha and Mary said, well, he's been in there four days, Lord, and he's going to stink. I'd be like, where's your faith? I'm here. Right. And so the Lord called Lazarus out of the grave. And, and and so then you know as uh, the Jews found out about this, they said, "Oh boy, well, now we got to kill two of them. We got to kill the Lord, and we got to kill Lazarus because he's the miracle of the you know of God bringing him back from the dead." So you know, because more people now after that miracle started following Jesus because the Son of God was doing these miracles. I mean, one thing to make a bunch of fish and bread appear walking on the water and stuff like that but when you take another human being and bring it back to life we got to do something about that after four days <laughs> right. four days in the tomb right and uh, they didn't embalm and stuff like that okay like we do nowadays you know which is wrong uh stick that formaldehyde in the body but i'll tell you what uh you know uh he was wrapped up and he he come out of the grave <laughs> jesus said don't wrap him he can't speak. He's unwrap him. <laughs> unwrap him. And they sat down and had dinner together. Isn't that amazing? Can you imagine sitting, Lazarus sitting at the table with the Lord and Martha and Mary and having a meal together, and all the people that were wailing and, and for crying days. for the death of Lazarus saying, what? Huh? Their sadness was changed to joy. And then the, the, the next day, what happens? The Lord gets on a, a donkey. And he goes into Jerusalem. In fulfillment of Scripture. Uh, that's right. Behold, your king yep. comes riding in on an ass. Yep. And the people are throwing their co cloaks and the palm branches down on the ground. Hosanna, who comes in the name of the Lord, you know. And then the Jews show up and says, shut up. Stop it. And they wouldn't. And the Lord even says, if they don't worship me, these very stones will cry out. Can you imagine that? That so, would happen. So the stones are alive too. Even the stones, <laughs> can, yeah. He could make this because he's the creator. Speaking. He could make the stones say stuff. You know, sure. stuff. remember the donkey that yeah. talked to the prophet. Yeah. He said, "And he said, why are you beating me for? I've never done anything wrong to you." <laughs> you know. So think about now. 
I'm going to get kind of weird here on this about our form of worship. Is it anything you want to do? Is it, I feel like worshiping the Lord this way, or I want to do it this way. What's acceptable to the Lord? Because he wants acceptable worship. And I'm going to show you a quick pattern of where the acceptable worship came from. When Moses came down off the mountain, Mount Sinai, he had the Ten Commandments. They kept moving as, as, the, as a Shekinah glory moved. They kept moving. With, the Lord was leading them, okay? And they had all the material, the gold and the silver and the, and the draperies and all the material to build the tabernacle of Moses in the wilderness, which was that portable worship center. And the Lord, if you read in the scriptures, the Lord explained to Moses how he wanted to be worshiped. And so Moses took the word, what he heard from the Lord, God, and he employed it. And now the people had a viable way to come and worship and be pleasing unto the Lord. And the, the, the ratification of all that was when the Shechem of glory came down on the mercy seat. Remember, it was a cloud and a flame of fire. The cloud by day and a flame of fire at night. And now, if they were doing stuff that, that uh, was not acceptable, uh, then there would be no Shechem of glory. There would be no glory cloud. Because God would say, why would I want to hang out with a bunch of people that don't worship me properly? You think about that a moment. So I'm going to show, I'm going to take you on a little journey here. And since this is an Orthodox podcast, Eastern Orthodox podcast, I want to show you how the Orthodox Church has come from that form of worship back in the wilderness. Our worship is different from other churches, including we have incense, chanting, Icons, candles, standing, kneeling, making the sign of the cross. And some people might say that our worship was invented by some bishop or a group of bishops a few centuries ago. Others say that the New Testament worship was spontaneous. However, the reality is that our divine liturgy, which we, every Sunday, we, we celebrate the divine liturgy, we celebrate today is essentially the same at its core, and the liturgy was of the first century Christians. Now, if I did a show one time on the Didi He, and they say, what a He? I said, the Didi He. This is a first century writing by the apostles on what the church did and how they worshiped in the first century. It was written by the apostles, called the Didi He. I got a, if you go on iHeart and scroll down, way down, you'll find it's called the Apostles' Doctrine. And that is where the, the Orthodox Church is of the same as the Didi He. The apostles and the first disciples were Jews. Think about that, except for Luke. Think about the Jews. Remember, that they converted. Remember 3,000 at Pentecost when Peter preached. And the guy cries out from the crowd, what should we do to be saved? Peter says, repent and be baptized. So if you look at the Didi He, the teaching of the apostles, you'll see all. it's a short book. It's, I forgot how many chapters, but they're very short. But you get it's like a letter. And you see how it was in the first century. And what I am so excited about is that the Orthodox Church has maintained that first century spirit of worship and brought it into the our right now. If you, they call it the ancient faith, the Church of our, of our fathers. You go all the way back how God wants to be worshipped, and that has been brought into the New Testament through the Orthodox Church. Even the vestments that the priests and the bishops wear look so much like the high priest vestments in the tabernacle. It's just quite amazing. So I said the first church was basically Jewish. Remember, they were kicked out of the synagogues. And then they actually met in homes before they went in brick and mortar, started building all these churches. So uh, a house of prayer. They would meet at homes and, and worship the Lord. It's kind of like underground. 
yeah and in fact uh it did go underground for a while mm -hmm. it was the church was underground and and next thing i know they're having the liturgy the divine liturgy on the graves of the saints that have gone the martyrs that have gone before them it's because one of the greatest persecutors saul was coming around killing christians yeah the same man that became one of the greatest disciples isn't that amazing that how god can take a man that was a christian killer and make him one of the pillars in the church of of uh telling the truth and uh, he didn't go out right away uh he went out into the desert as i said in previous radio shows and and uh Spend god time, yeah. one on one in the arabian desert and they talked about truth and worship all there and then paul comes back and then he meets with the apostles and they go hey i don't know if we can trust this guy he may be a liar right but then they start seeing him being open in the streets, preaching the Christ, the message of Christ, and being persecuted and trying to be killed and so forth. Then they started thinking, well, maybe there's more to this guy than we think. And then there, there was slowly their trust was, was established in Paul. Quite amazing story of Paul itself. In fact, mm -hmm. there's a movie out right now called Paul, and I want to go see that movie. And, and it's about the fight. And it's it's at the movie houses, so uh, I don't know how long it's going to be there, but I, I know I got to move on it before it leaves the theater. But uh, you know, hopefully, or you can get it on a DVD, Netflix, <laughs> Netflix. I don't know if they'll it'll even show up. Yeah, sure. But uh, you know, the apostles and the first disciples were Jews, and when they came became followers of Christ, they did not in reinvent the wheel of worship but they brought it forth from the judaic worship think about that if if the, the lord worked with moses and the and his people in the wilderness and that was not lost that was maintained and brought all the way to israel to to jerusalem and they even built the temple there and that what happened in the tabernacle in the wilderness was brought forth into the temple worship it was all there it was not lost and then jesus said 70 A.D., it's all coming down, and it did. Not one stone right. will be left upon another, all which came questions down. it today. And then by that time, the, uh, the, the Christian church was rooted and ground you know, in, in, in the faith. And the Jews that converted to Christianity brought that form of worship with them. It was not lost. So they took the forms and rituals of the worship that they knew Judaic worship and gave it in a Christian character. Look at Jesus himself. He observed all the rituals of worship, including fast feasts and pilgrimages. And the divine liturgy that we celebrate every Sunday is rooted in the ancient Judaic worship. Now, I'm going to stop there and tell you something about that. If you, would, uh, if being a Jew would come to an Orthodox church, uh, and there's two serve two parts of the service. The first is the liturgy of the Word, and then the, the second part is the liturgy of the faithful, and that's when the body and blood of Christ is is uh, you know uh, prepared and given to the faithful. But up in the front end of it, the, the word liturgy of the Word, it's just like a Jewish synagogue service. It's except. We say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But if you look at there's the, the litanies and, and the readings and the preachment of God's Word is all in that first part of the divine liturgy. But then it, it switches into the liturgy of the faithful where uh, we, we take uh, what Jesus said, this is my body and this is my blood, and bring it into realization. They say, well, you know, the Lord is invisible. We can't see him. Well, in, in the Orthodox Church, you sure can. It's the Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist is right there, right there. So you can, it says, taste and see. Come and see. So the Judaic worship came from the same commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai, as I said before, by God himself. Who wrote on the tablets? Did Moses use a, a laser to etch all the commandments in there? Or is what the, the finger of God that wrote the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not. And you say, well, that's not too much fun, is it? Thou shalt not. Think about it. Is everything that God said, thou shalt not, is for our benefit? When I raised my kids, I, could, I didn't let them run rampant like little criminals. I trained them. I set barriers and boundaries, and so does the Lord set barriers and boundaries for our safety. Now, the 
Orthodox Christian worship is the earthly component of eternal worship in heaven. The structure and decoration of our temple, which is the church building, along with the words, prayers, and petitions, and the rubrics, the movements in, within the church of the services all reflect the nature of the heavenly worship. It's where we go to hear the words of instruction on how to live life on this earth in preparation for life, eternal life in heaven. That should be on the lips or a thought of every Christian that it doesn't end in the grave, that the Jesus that we worship resurrected on the third day, and, and 40 days later he went into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And then we he's the first fruits to us, showing us that, that those are, that can happen to you. Now, we're all going to be brought out of the ground. We're all going to be uh, resurrected. And some's going to go to, to the right, and some's going to go to the left. And that's all boils back down to your choices of you want to worship yourself or do you want to worship God. As I said in the beginning, God is seeking the worshipers who worship him in spirit and in truth. So where is truth? The only place I know where I get truth is Jesus Christ. Even even. Pilate's wife had a dream about about this the crucifixion. She said, have, she said, have nothing to do with this righteous man. It must have been Satan because if she would have stopped him, that would have stopped the procedure of, of the sacrifice of Christ. Exactly. It had to happen. Right. We had to have that happen. Right. And an interesting, Chad. The interesting, well, why you say that is that that you know the uh, the the Passover was was being prepared and, and celebrated. But then when the when the actual, if you look at the timing of that calendar of that event, that the, when the Jews were eating the Passover lamb, the true Lamb of God was hanging on the cross, dying for the sins of the world. And did not Christ? Did not Paul say in his gospel in his epistle? Uh, Jesus is our, our Passover. Passover. I think that's in First Chronicles something. No, First Corinthians. Oh, First Corinthians. But see, the thing about the Passover is, if Jesus is our Passover, is there any need for another Passover? That's when he old... said it's complete. He meant it's didn't complete. I, didn't I? He says it is finished. And that's why the the the, the what do you call it, the temple veil was ripped and ripped and half means like there's no separation anymore. I'm I'm out of here. Uh, right, and and because of what Christ did, He's established uh, that that connection with heaven through His sacrifice. Now that since He's ascended to heaven, and the Holy Spirit, the Father sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Now to to bring see that's where Jesus could be at one place at one time on His earthly ministry. Right, four days dead, Lazarus. Right, He even delayed coming to see Lazarus to raise him from the dead because He says His in His death will glorify God. He even said that in in the uh, in the Gospels. And it's even though uh, I think it was Martha said, if you came or Mary, if you had came here earlier, wouldn't have died. You could have healed him. Well, this is even better than that. I'm going to bring him back from the dead. Watch this. Yeah, <laughs> watch this. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a good thing he said Lazarus, because if if you would have said come forth, maybe all of creation in the grave would have came forth. Whoop. Whoa. No, I I got to say Lazarus. So he said, Lazarus, come forth. Now, if you want to see what, what's going on in heaven and worship, I beg you to go re check out the book of Revelation. It is all in there of what's going on in heaven right now, how the elders and all that are throwing their crowns and, and falling down and worshiping uh, the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's all in Revelation. Mm -hmm. If you just take time to read. So God set up that worship center called the tabernacle it ended up in jerusalem as brick and mortar and then when it was torn down the christian church birthed uh, and kept that form of worship through the through the orthodox church and then in heaven as we read in revelation it's still going on today that worship in heaven that is acceptable to the holy trinity it's there and if you don't like it you don't have to be there get it you don't have to be there. I don't know why you wouldn't want to. I mean, why not be with the Creator? Think about it. Are are we created, or we just ha are, happen through evolution? I never heard a monkey say, 
about he never talks about that have you ever heard a monkey say that yeah i always tell people monkeys are still monkeys and humans are still humans right (laughs) there is a created order and we're not angels either i'm going to correct you ever some people well he's an angel now no he's not we're just below the angels that christ says right and we will judge our angels of how they worked with us on this earth so uh, when we're resurrected and move into heaven god will give us the authority to judge our angels so there's a fear on their part of making sure they do a good job. What if we just say, who am I to judge? Right. But but th- think about it. We'll be in perfection at that time. Incorruptible, right? We'll be in per- incorruptible. We'll be perfect. Immortal. Exactly. And, w- and a, th- a lot of the questions we have now, we won't even have to answer because there'll be total revelation at that moment, that twinkling of an eye as you are with Christ, okay, that you won't even have. What about <laughs> – don't have to answer that because it's already it's already revealed to you through that twinkling of an eye it's just like Hmm. now hebrews tells us about going to church do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some are and that was written back in the day when that was going on so some were going to church and some weren't but exhort one another as so much the more as you see the day approaching. And, and we're closer to that day than we've ever been of the day of the Lord when he comes back. And so you think about that. Okay, I don't want to be with those hypocrites over there. Nope. Why not? You're one, too. Let's all get together and be hypocrites together. Because we say one thing, do another. Even though, but see, that's where St. John Chrysostom said, the church is a hospital for saints. And if you're in a church that doesn't treat you like you're a patient in the hospital, flee. Because the Lord said, the gates of hell will not prevail against, capital M, my church. So find out where Jesus' church is at and join it. Okay? Now, church is not perfect because there's people in there that make it imperfect. But I tell you what, the Savior, the the Lord Jesus Christ, who we worship, is perfect. He's perfect. He was the perfect man and God. Think about that. It's hard to hard to put your brain around all that. The God man, the incarnation, when Jesus took his flesh from a woman and became the God man on this earth, and and even Saint Athanasio said, the God became man so man could be like God, and that's all possible through the cross. The, the entombment and then the blessed resurrection and the ascension into heaven. It's all there. So I remember I said, re- read Revelation. You know, it's all about, all about worship in heaven going on eternally. And, you, and this thing about uh, translating into heaven and being with the creator and author of life forever and ever. How can you remember Thomas? When he was standing before the Lord, and he says, Thomas, why don't you put your fingers in the wounds and your hand in my side? And he fell down and he worshiped God, Jesus Christ, saying, my Lord and my God. I think that's what's going to happen, Chad, when we're there. We're just going to be beside ourselves and fall down and worship and, and just uh, can't even lift our eyes because of the holiness uh, uh, where we're going to be. We might be doing that. A lot of other people might be running into the caves and stuff and hiding. Well, there's some of them are going to want the rocks to fall on them and kill them. Because they don't want to deal with the wrath of the Lord. No, because you, you live your life in self, idolatry, as I said in the beginning. Uh, you, you can do that. You can live for self. And if you don't know the Lord and how he's going to come, it's going to catch you off guard like a thief, and it's going to be a shock to you, and you're going to go running. Remember, there were five wise virgins and five, five foolish. foolish virgins. The five virgins were living the life of virtue. Believers. They were the virtue. They were expanding their virtue. They were, they were. See, by being in church, you get to hear the good news, the message of Jesus Christ, and also the how to be like Jesus. That's all. Not all churches, Al. They're supposed to be. They're supposed to be. A lot of them are preaching prosperity gospels no. and the and the easy words, you know, just come in and everything's okay and out you go. Do you have a uh, do you have a private jet a to pri- fly around? A private jet? I do not. I don't either. 
Jesus didn't either. No, he used sandals he had and a, a stick. Think about Jesus. He had a borrowed. Uh, he had a borrowed manger. He had to borrow the swaddling clothes. He had a, had someone carry his cross. Never had a house. No, and uh, except for his parents, right? Mom. Yeah, and then uh, uh, he borrowed the tomb. Yeah, and, and and he didn't need all this. He didn't stuff. borrow the tomb. It was given to him. Well, he, he didn't, didn't even, need it very he long. He didn't even pre-plan. He didn't a tomb. No. You know, but thanks, thanks for Joseph of Mar- Arimathea, right. let, letting him. In, but I only, I only need it for a couple of days. <laughs> That's right. You can have it back. You could have put me anywhere. I was fine. Yeah, but uh, the tomb was good because it was sealed by the Romans and all that stuff, which was part more part of the miracle. I think it would have been better if they just left him in the streets because the problem was the Romans took over and guarded the place, and then they're making all sorts of accusations like, "Oh, the Romans took him out and hit yeah. him somewhere," and, and then the apostles took him out. Yeah, or somebody took him. You out. Know, there's all these lies. They that, should have left him on the streets like the two witnesses and when god says come up here they just wake come, up whack, and gone up they go so uh, by by going uh, to the to the ch- true church of christ okay you'll hear about the incarnation of jesus christ as the god man you we will under we will get the teaching from the holy scriptures in our church fathers of what the incarnation means how does it apply to us and we will hear the holy scriptures the, we will hear the epistle and the gospels, and, and even in the Orthodox Church right now, because you know this is our Lenten season and, and getting ready to celebrate Holy Week now. Uh, is we're in the Old Testament quite a bit. We're reading a lot of the Old Testament, and uh, so don't think the Old Testament is gone, uh, because the Orthodox Church preserves. Uh, we read the Psalms. We're in. In fact, now we're in the Book of Job. We came out of Genesis. Now we're reading the Book of Job. We we are in Proverbs. Reading Isaiah. So the, you know the church is. We're. We have got the old and the new going on at the same time. And then we have tradition. You'll learn about the tradition. I'm not talking about little T. I'm talking about the big T tradition that the apostles gave us. If you just read the Didi He, which I talked about earlier, you'll get an idea of what it was like in the first century. And if you want to know what it was like in the first century, just visit an Orthodox church, and you'll see how it was in the beginning. And we have no Vatican II. We don't uh, change. The only thing that changed was used to say land and sea on we we have to pray for the travelers for land and sea they have added the word air because now we have airplanes so it's land sea and air another okay? th- another great thing about the orthodox church is you guys don't use instruments you use your voices yes cuz those are god created beautiful there are god created voices and so uh, no organs no drum sets and, and all the guitars and stuff like that uh, no that's not going to happen and so you think about that the, vo- the voice that God created to get to use that. And then we, we can sing in four-part harmony. We can have four parts. And it's and when I we sing a lot, uh, O Heavenly King, and to hear it sung in four parts, you you're, you're just you're, get goosebumps and your hair stands up and you feel like you just translated to heaven. It's such a beautiful, uh, it's a hymn. It's it, this O Heavenly King. We say this every day. It's our morning prayer routine. The O Heavenly King, the Comforter of the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere and fill us all things, treasury of blessing, giver of life. Come and abide in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls. Oh, good one. Now, what is wrong with that prayer? I like it. That is that happens every morning. I say it every morning. Now you think about where the ecclesia in the Greek word the church the Greek word is ecclesia and there's two words ek and kaleo and now these mean out and to call so you think about that to be in the true church of Christ you have to be called out and so that's part of the job of the Holy Spirit to call you into himself and you have to respond to that now there's going to be people that have that have not happened and they're going to be in that church and they're going to look like they belong there and because they're they're there present bodily bodily but there's their spirit there are, are they going to have the lord going to say to them you worship me with your lips but your heart is far from me and that's not for us to judge we have to pray for everybody even our enemies it says in the scripture pray for those who despitefully use you and the only you can do that is through the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you that. Now, what do the church fathers have to say about being in church? St. Ephraim, the Syrian, says, 
Blessed are those who watch according to God continually, for they will be overshadowed by God in the day of judgment. Becoming sons of the bridal chamber, in joy and gladness they will see the bridegroom. But I, and my like, idle and pleasure-loving, will weep and lament as we watch our brothers in everlasting joy while we are in torment. St. Ephraim the Syrian. Another church father, the goal of our life is to unite with God, but sin completely hinders this. Therefore, flee from sin as from a terrible enemy, as from the destroyer of the soul. Because to be without God is death, not life. Let us therefore understand our purpose. Let us always remember that the master of all calls us to union with himself. St. John Cronstand. Your option. You can either do that or not. It's your choice, and God has laid that choice before you. I hope what this radio show has helped you understand and to make the proper choice. Now, I'm going to close with this last church father, St. Paisios of Mount Athos. Struggle with all your power to gain paradise, and do not listen to those who say that everyone will be saved. This is a trap of Satan so that we will not struggle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening to the O Gladsome Light Podcast. We hope this program has encouraged you to fight the good fight of faith and walk in the accordance with the commandments of our Lord. May God bless you on your journey to salvation.